Thank you, although no malaria or infectious diseases today. Um, as many of you know, um, malnutrition is thought to be the underlying contributing factor in about 45% of all under five child deaths, implicated in over 3 million deaths annually. In short, malnutrition makes young children more vulnerable to severe diseases. Traditionally, and many of you know this already, malnutrition has been assessed by measuring weight and height, and then comparing these along a normal distribution of a reference population to define cutoffs for clinical disease. Malnutrition may be acute or chronic. Chronic, also called stunting, is defined as low height for age, and generally happens between two, before two years of age due to long-term nutritional deficiencies often coupled with repeated infections. Importantly, its effects on development may be irreversible. Acute malnutrition is also called wasting and is defined as low weight for height. It's a strong predictor of mortality in under fives and is generally due to an acute food shortage or disease. So what is MUAC? So MUAC is in essence a numbered strap wound around the middle of an upper arm, hence called mid-upper arm circumference, typically in children aged six months to 59 months, to assess acute malnutrition through muscle mass wasting. It's been increasingly used in the field, in part because it's just a lot easier to carry around than a pair of scales and a meter rule, um, and it's much easier when children don't stand still. Um, and it's also color-coded, for each different type of diagnosis, so red for severe, yellow for moderate, and then green for normal. And now it's increasingly used in the field, um, not only to diagnose different types of malnutrition, but also used to define entry and exit criteria for different treatment feeding programs, and also different types of treatment. So if it's so widely used, why did we bother trying to develop something different? What problems were we trying to solve? Well, in part, we wanted to, to sort of address some design flaws that have been reported through different um, reviews and things, that you can pull thin straps too tight, that often if there's only a single sort of uh, slit for which to pass through the strap, you can get misalignment and reading errors. But mainly, this arose from discussions in 2013 when we looked at how we at MSF assess vulnerability in populations other than the under fives. And increasingly, we realized that malnutrition was a problem in other groups, such as the elderly, pregnant women, and people who live with HIV AIDS. And there's some sort of prevalence figures given there. And often these groups were excluded from nutrition services, sometimes just from a lack of prioritization, but also from a lack of handy tools to diagnose the malnutrition. And in fact, there are actually MUAC strips for older age groups, but they're rarely used. And so we linked with Help Age International and a group of nutrition experts to develop a double-sided MUAC strip, both for adults and for children, hence a universal MUAC or a unimuac. In part as an advocacy tool, really to sort of increase awareness of the need to look for malnutrition in these groups, and not only as someone suggested on the review committee that it was solving the problem of just not having enough pockets to carry around two strips. So how is the Unimuac different? And some of you may have seen the demonstration at lunchtime. Um, but in essence, it has a three-slit design for stability, a very clear ruler and a reading window, and a broad strap width to basically address pulling strengths. You can't pull it too tight and for more stability. It's double-sided, one side for adults, which you can see from the sort of blocked out little figures and a very handily sort of placed pregnant woman along one side with the lady with the bump, and on one side for children. And these adult cutoffs were basically based on, on, on expert consensus, including for sort of the pregnant and lactating women. However, when we printed our prototype version, we discovered a measuring error in the ruler of our strap, the Unimuac, as well as in what we were using as the gold standard, which is the UNICEF MUAC strap, as you can see on the picture here at the top. 
So that's supposed to be a 10 centimeter circumference and you can tell that it clearly is not measuring that. So we hypothesized that this difference was actually due to the thickness of the strap material. So when I mean thickness, this is what I mean, the thickness of the strap material. And so we recalibrated the ruler on the strap to account for this, this thickness. And you can see here at the bottom, we've got the two straps and it's a very subtle difference, but they're sort of been recalibrated. And so we conducted a standardization exercise, essentially to look at whether correcting for the thickness of the strap through, um, through this recalibration of the ruler actually improved its measurement accuracy. So how do we even think about measurement accuracy in a, in a, in a tool? So there's various parameters, and I'll go very quickly through these. You can think about bias, and that's basically as to whether there's a systematic error in measurement. So not a random error, as you can see. Um, I don't... I know that the online audience can't see the pointer, but if I say, if you look at the um, biased measurements, you can see that there is a consistent systematic error in measurement, as opposed to those with unbiased. We also look for precision, which is essentially a reproducibility or reliability. So you can tell the difference here between precise measurements, which seem to be reproducible, or imp imprecise, which are not. And accuracy is a sort of an amalgamation of the two. We also look, as many of you know, about sensitivity, which is a true positive rate, sort of uh, a rule in, or specificity, which is a true negative rate, a rule out. So we did this. We took 12 plastic tubes of known circumference and, um, and coded them and then placed them in random order. And then we got 17 independent enumerators to measure them in both millimeters and in color class using both straps. So we got 204 measurements recorded for each strap, 408 in total. And this shows the first set of results. So this is a modified bland Altman plot, which measures the agreement between two values. Now, I'm not going to go through the methodology here. Very happy to discuss it in the atrium over a glass of wine later. But in essence, <laughs> in essence, it looks at a comparison between the measured values to the true value of the tube. The most important thing to look at here is this red line. And actually, it shows the average measurement error for each strap from zero, or the real value of the tube. So you want this line to be as close to zero as possible. And as you can see here, the average error with the Unimuac strap was minus 2.5 millimeters. The average error with the UNICEF strap was one point, a plus 1.25 millimeters. Now, you might think that a millimetre sounds pretty innocuous, but I hope to show you that actually even such a small amount can be very, very important. I'm going to skip over this slide for the sake of time. But just to show that this is how much one millimetre actually affects diagnostic accuracy when we look at colour class. So this table shows colour accuracy of both tools for UNICEF and, and, and UNIMOAC. The left-hand column shows the true colour class of each tube that we measured. And then across the top, we see that which was measured by the enumerator. The middle diagonal line highlighted in blue shows where all the results would fall if the tool was 100% accurate. And everything in a white cell is an incorrect measurement. As you can see in this table, 97% of all the Unimoac measurements were correctly identified in terms of their color class, compared to only 84% with the gold standard UNICEF tool. And this is particularly interesting. If you look here, you can see that the UNIMUAC incorrectly <coughs> diagnosed, I'm gonna use that word, diagnosed sort of um, what should have been a red tube, a red class tube as yellow. <coughs> Whereas the UNICEF tool incorrectly diagnosed 17 red measurements as yellow. So what does that mean? That basically shows that the color class errors are concentrated in the red classification, which is actually that of severe acute malnutrition. So if we go back to the way in which we traditionally talk about sort of measurement errors, you can see that the measurement bias caused through the UNICEF MUAC not accounting for strip thickness, basically that it means that the Unimuac has a much higher sensitivity, so a, a, a sort of a, a, the rate of identifying true cases um, compared to the UNICEF strap. 
96% compared to 75% for severe acute malnutrition, 98% to 85% across both malnutrition classes. The specificity, the ability to rule out, was similar across both, both um, straps. Um, and I haven't included precision data here for the interests of time, but basically when we looked at the data within the 95% limits of agreement under the Bland-Altman method, the precision was same for both straps. So, in conclusion, the Union Mike strap is more accurate in measuring true circumference than the UNICEF strap, particularly so in small circumferences. And the Unimawak strap has a higher sensitivity for diagnosing SAM and general acute malnutrition than the UNICEF strap. There were, of course, limitations to our very sort of short standardization exercise. We used plastic tubes and not human compressible skin. We didn't test the measurement side of the adult um, Unimawak. And it was certainly true that this three slit design, designed for sort of stability, required more of an initial um, explanation than the slightly more intuitive UNICEF MOAC, which only has one sl slit. Whilst we were putting together sort of our results, we actually were contacted by several other organisations asking us as to uh, whether they could take a look at the, the, the strap. And we gave it to people, basically saying, sort of reiterating this was not an official MSF tool, this was merely a project in development. Um, and also that they could use it, providing they gave us feedback. Action Against Hunger used it in a test against other straps um, in the community, looking at how mothers used it to monitor malnutrition in their kids. And they wrote back to us saying this, mothers performed better with the Unimuac than other types of device tested. Mothers understood it and can do it even better than we thought. So the key implication of these findings is essentially that the use of a MUAC tool with low sensitivity could lead to misdiagnosis and service denial for the most vulnerable patients. And inaccurate measurements can lead to inconsistent collection of data and misre misreporting of prevalence. There are some key questions. Essentially, the MUAC cutoffs that we have at the moment, can we still use them? And it, it would seem that it's probably true since most um, of these cutoffs have been developed using a wide variety of straps. Um, can we actually see the same inaccuracies in, in measurement in the field? And does this actually lead to service denial for, for children and adults? And then following from the Mother's Understand and Can Do It study, MUAC, MUAC, um, it's are, are, um, are these MUACs, the UNIMAC, actually suitable for community use? So our next steps are to see, to conduct a mixed method study in the MSF field to explore whether or not this measurement bias is actually reproducible in the compressible skin of children. We will also gather qualitative feedback to explore how easily healthcare workers and mothers are able to use the tool and actually whether it's acceptable to both groups. So for whether healthcare workers can accept mothers um, inputting into their management um, and, and look really at the options of community usage. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I should have, oh, I was just going to say, I, I didn't miss the thank you slide, but just thank you to Becky Roby and Chrissy Lebeau, who um, did most of the work, to Philip Ducrow, who thought of the idea, and a particular thanks to Mark Myatt for his support in the study design and analysis. <laughs>